Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The Asset Store is full of awesome tools and assets to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video let's check out some highlights for October 23. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video I already covered the past free new assets, and next one I'll cover top visuals and effects. As always, there's links to the assets in the description, and as a bonus you can use the coupon code monkey 10 to get 10% off your order. Also, by the way, my own game has just come out this month. It's a fun game with some automation, colony building, and defense mechanics where you can build a colony, automate it, and keep the tiny defenseless dinkies safe from harm. You can then colonize other planets, gather more resources, with the ultimate goal of colonizing every single planet and automating everything so your dinkies can finally relax. It is out now on Steam, I hope you like it and please make sure to write a review. Also, right now you can get an only at 50% off. Alright, so starting off with a simple tool to help you make some interesting transitions. Adding a simple transition like this one is a great way to easily add a bunch of polish to your game. Anything more than a hard cut will always look so much better. This one has 17 different styles with tons of customization. The effects are all very varied. There are some super simple swipes, some that look like some torn paper. There are some weird geometric shapes. Really lots of variation in just about any direction. You can use it to easily fade to a solid color like black, or use it to smoothly transition from one camera to the next. This is indeed a great, super simple way to add that extra bit of polish to your game. Next, here's a really fun, a very unique one called Pro Sprite. It's a scene view sprite painter, meaning that you create an area in the scene view and really you then just draw on it. It's certainly a very unique tool that looks like it can be quite useful, like for example when prototyping, you can super easily draw a rough sketch of exactly what you're trying to build. I always waste a whole bunch of time making separate Photoshop files for the various icons in my games, being able to draw some temporary icons directly inside Unity, that would be quite useful. And of course, if you are a proper artist, then you could even draw some final or near final art just using this tool. That could help you save quite a bit of time. And it also has a sort of prefab system. So as you draw on the original, the changes are reflected in all the copies. And it even supports some animation, so you can easily draw things at various frames to make some nice sprite sheet animation. Honestly, this looks like a really impressive, very unique tool. I'm surprised I've never seen anything like this. Then, if your game has tons of skills and you need a tool to help you visualize all that data, check out this one. You can define a skill, you can give it a name, an icon, and then define which skills are requirements for that one. You can then upgrade that skill, define a cooldown and various properties. It can also take all that data and auto-generate some c -sharp scripts. Personally, I'm always a fan of this feature. I'm always a fan of c -sharp script generation. This way you don't have to mess around with tons of strings all over the place. This is actually one of my favorite features from the input system. You just generate the class and you can then add logic on various events. Then for making your game look gorgeous, you're going to need some volumetric fog. So here's the tool to help you do that. In case you don't know what exactly is volumetric fog, that's basically how you can have fog that has an actual shape, like fog peering through a window or peering through the trees. So God rays, those are an example of a type of volumetric fog. It's a simple effect, but it always looks really great. It gives your lighting, gives your scenes a really nice 3D feel. The fog can also be affected by lights, giving it all kinds of colors, and you can even use some light cookies. So if you want to improve the visuals of your game, definitely look into some volumetric fog. Next, we have a tool called Data Driven Enums. This is a super simple tool for defining some data structures in an enum and easily choose which ones you want to use in your games. So it's kind of a different way of building something like scriptable objects and making it very database. Meaning all these types, these are not defined at compile time, but instead they can be added and modified afterwards. This is the kind of thing that can be quite useful, especially if you plan to add some player modding. While you can technically create some scriptable objects at runtime, it is much easier to just read a JSON file and import that directly in the game. Then here's a very unique, very strange one called Time Logger. Basically, it's a logging tool, so you can record all kinds of debug.log. You can log whenever something happens in your game, but then it also has a time dimension. So you can scrub through a timeline to see what log was fired and when. Then you can also add some extra gizmos to visually see on what position was that object when that log was fired. I can see this being quite useful if you have, for example, some kind of target finding logic and you want to visually see when this unit actually find the targets and where was it when that happened. Being able to link up a log with an actual position in the world, that can be super useful in various scenarios. This one has plenty of unique gizmo types. You can have some super simple boxes or spheres or even some frustrum cones and simple vectors. Definitely a very unique, potentially very useful tool. Next, if you want to implement some chat in your game, but you don't want to have to build an entire feature complete chat system, then maybe look at a tool like this one. You've got a nice input text box to write whatever you want. It has some nice scrolling text field showing all the text. 
then supports various colors and text decoration, like bold and font sizes, also supports some emojis, and in the demo they also show something like the Counter-Strike kill feed, where you have a name and then a weapon icon and then another name. I'm assuming that you can also add some custom icons on top, so yep, building something like this sounds super simple. Actually, I'm thinking of implementing a simple chat system myself in my own game, Dinky Guardians, so perhaps I'll actually pick up this one in order to save me quite a bit of time. Then, if you need to do some splines, but you need to do them on the UI instead of the world, then check out this one. It does exactly what you want, it lets you render splines directly in the UI, which also means you can then play around with all of the various UI elements, so things like masks, shadows and outlines, those all work with these spline-based lines. The spline itself can be positioned anywhere you want, with whatever curve you want. You can even modify various other properties, things like texture and size at various points in the spline. It even uses the job system to make it super performant. This is actually the very first tool that I've seen that is built directly on top of Unity's recently released official spline package. And looking at it, this seems to be very well built, so this is great news. Next, here's an interesting one. So one thing that a lot of people have issues with is 3D pathfinding, since for example the built-in nav mesh, that one only works on a flat plane. So if you need 3D pathfinding, meaning going up and down, for that, look at a tool like this one. This is obviously great for flying units, so things like a helicopter or really just some kind of flying monster. This one is using Go Pathfinding, meaning goal-oriented action planning. Basically, you define a goal with a position in 3D space, and the agent tries to complete that goal. The goal can also be more than just move here. It can be follow or orbit a certain position. So if you have any game with some flying units, then a tool like this one is definitely a must-have. Then, if you need some extra frames, one excellent piece of tech is DLSS. That's Deep Learning Super Sampling. Basically, it lets you run your game at a low resolution and then use machine learning to upscale it. This one seems really easy to use, you just drop the component on the camera and that's really it. So this is an excellent addition if your game is GPU limited. The one obvious downside is this only works on NVIDIA RTX GPUs. For things like AMD, you have to look into another piece of tech called Fidelity Super Resolution, I think. So this specific tech has some limitation, but it couldn't hurt to have this option just in case your player does have an RTX GPU. Alright, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on the Unity Asset Store for October 23. There's links to all in the description, and as bonus you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. Also check out my recently released game, Dinky Gardens, and I hope you'll like it. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.